At the UPS Store, we want to make this summer the summer of shipping. Summer ship a So you can start crossing items off your must-ship list, like the vintage film camera your college kid needs for class or the vase you told your mom you would send her ages ago. And with our pack-and-ship guarantee, your items arrive safe or we reimburse you. So stop by your local store today for everything you need to be unstoppable. Visit the upsstore.com slash guarantee for full details. Available at participating locations. Most locations are independently owned. Product, services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary. See center for details. The UPS Store. Be unstoppable. You're listening to a Mint podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Why Not Mint Money. So today we have our guest as Mr. Shravan Goel. He heads passive arbitrage and quant strategies at UTI AMC. He is a CFA charter holder with over 16 years of experience in risk management, equity research and portfolio analysis. Today he is here to share his words of wisdom on passive investing. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started with your money journey. Hi, Shravan. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So my first question to you is, uh, Shravan, passive funds are gaining a lot of traction in developed uh, you know, markets and a large part of incremental flows is also going to passive funds. Uh, so do you see similar trends emerging in India? So we have seen phenomenal growth of passive funds in India in last 10 years. So size of passive funds have grown from just about 10,000 crore to almost 9 lakh crore in last 10 years. Okay. So almost 90 times growth in last 10 years. Last 10. At the same time as a percentage of mutual fund industries area, it has increased from just about 1% to almost 17% now. Hmm. So we have seen a lot of growth in passive funds in last few years. So initial phase of growth was primarily driven by uh, retirement funds such as EPFO, because uh, uh, EPFO and other retirement funds were mandated to invest initially 5% of annual allocation in ETFs, yeah. which was subsequently increased to 15% of annual allocation. Mm. But at the same time, uh, incremental growth is seen uh, across various verticals such as RIAs, distributors, family offices, advocating these simple yet effective investment solutions to their clients. I see. Um, we believe that going forward, uh, uh, the growth could be much more broad-based. Mainly because uh, retail investors uh, led by new age investors are aware about the benefits of these low cost investment solutions. Because of improved internet penetration, uh, investors are becoming aware about these passive solutions. And okay. I believe that uh, we could see much more broad based rally or growth in going forward. Yeah, that's an interesting insight, Ashravan. Uh, so, my second question to you is uh, within passive funds, uh, how should investors uh, choose between ETFs and index uh, funds? So, objective of both ETF and index fund is to replicate the benchmark and with an aim to generate returns which are very close to the underlying benchmark. Yeah. So, passive funds are also called beta tracker because these kind of funds help you generate market returns. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, we believe that uh, the mode of investment is based on the convenience and overall cost of ownership. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, investment in ETF is very similar to investment in stocks because. Yeah. Investors who want to invest in ETF, they can invest through exchanges, right? Right. While investment in index fund is very similar to investment in mutual funds. Mutual funds. Because yeah. You invest and get D and NAB. So mm. investors should choose between ETF and index fund based on overall cost of ownership and convenience okay. of investments. So in investors who are uh, aware about the nuance of investing in stocks and mm. convenient to invest in stocks, uh, they could choose to invest in ETFs. While investors mm. who believe that uh, from longer term perspective, it is very not very important to capture intraday price movement. Yeah. They can choose to invest in index fund. Right. So you are saying the overall cost of ownership is on the higher side with ETFs is what you have to say. So we believe that uh, uh, overall cost of uh, ownership mm-hmm. includes, uh, apart from expense ratio, it also includes brokerage, demand charges and impact cost of ETFs. Right. Yeah. While these costs are bundled up in, in case of index fund uh, platform. Right, so, bundled up as total right. expense. Ratio. Any investor who is having account with, say, discount brokers who is paying lower brokerage, hmm. they can choose to invest in, in ETFs. Right. right. While so, I'm saying hmm. rather, rather than just focusing on expense ratio charged by AMC, you should also be considering that overall cost of That's right, investment yeah. in ETFs. Right. Uh, so, my third question to you, Shravan, is uh, one of the biggest concerns of uh, investors in ETFs is liquidity. How can the industry overcome this uh, issue? What do you have to say about this? So, uh, we believe that uh, higher 
execution cost is a perceived risk or liquidity is a perceived risk in case of ETF. Okay. Yeah. Market. Uh, so AMCs are mandated to appoint market makers or authorized participants. Okay. Who are providing liquidity on exchanges? So mm -hmm. if you are an investor who wants to buy ETF units, then market maker will provide that units to you. All right. And in yeah. turn, market maker will come to AMCs to create those units uh, liquidity for or liquidity for the for themselves. So we believe that uh, it's a perceived risk. Mm -hmm. um, although we right. believe that as and when uh, the development of passive funds improved mm -hmm. drastically and there are a lot of in, uh, retail participation, then liquidity will further improve. So uh, it's honest lies on the on the market participants, right? Right. Uh, to in, improve the liquidity. So if distributors and RIs are advocating these solutions to their investors, in that case, liquidity will further improve going forward. But at right. the same time, market uh, regulator SEBI has come out with efficient market making mechanism, mm. wherein because of better settlement process, the capital requirement for market maker will further reduce in these ETFs. So right. we believe that. Uh, the efforts are made in the right direction to improve liquidity mm -hmm. for these ETFs going forward. Right. Just I'm curious about uh, who, who does the AMC appoint as market makers? So uh, market makers are nothing but uh, brokers. Brokers, okay. Who are uh, also dealing in these securities. Right, right. So it's more of a perceived problem. Perceived would, problem. Yes. Although during extreme market environment, yeah. for example, during election day, that happened, yeah. the, there could be slightly higher uh, liquidity issue. Mainly okay. because these market makers uh, find it difficult to provide liquidity in such volatile market environment. So the right. spreads could increase during extreme market environment. But right. We don't see that kind of scenario uh, playing out on a regular basis. So my next question to you uh, is, uh, what are some exciting emerging opportunities that you see within passive investments going forward? So we believe that uh, uh, investors should start with simple to understand market cap oriented funds such as mm -hmm. DIFTs and checks because yeah. Um, wider audience is aware about these indices because yeah. uh, we know these indices for 20, 30, 30 year period, right? But apart from these broad market cap based indices, index, index funds are available in different platforms such as thematic uh, funds such as consumption, manufacturing. Uh, these That's right, yeah. ETFs are index funds. At the same time, index funds are also based on uh, sectors such as IT ETF, bank ETF, mm. uh, healthcare ETF. But apart from these uh, market cap and thematic and sector based ETF, mm. new set of uh, uh, avenues have opened up in the last few years. So these are called smart beta factor based indices. Okay. Right. Yeah. So uh, people have analyzed performance of these factor based indices uh, globally from longer term perspective. For example, right. there are four broad types of uh, factor based indices such as momentum, low mm. volatility, quality and value. Right. 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 So these are rule based uh, smart beta fund wherein portfolio is created based on certain rules. Right. For example, let's say quality is a very important para parameter within mid-cap space. Mm -hmm. So we have a mid-cap oriented quality index fund, which is mm. called uh, UTI Nifty 150 mid-cap quality 50 index fund, mm. wherein 50 high quality companies are selected from broader mid-cap universe okay. based on certain quality parameters such as ROE, load. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, no financial leverage and consistency of profit growth. So based right, on these yeah. parameters, uh, these smart beta funds can be created. For example, we have close to two decades of uh, data in Indian in markets and mm. these smart beta funds have performed far better as compared to plain vanilla market cap based index this fund. Yeah. So apart from uh, broad market cap based ETF or index fund, investors mm. can also uh, use these smart beta fund to generate additional returns for their portfolio. That's an interesting insight again. Uh, so my last question to you, what are you doing to popularize, uh, you know, passive funds, the concept of passive funds among the investors and distributors? Yeah. So I would say passive funds are pool products, hmm. mainly because they are providing uh, investors simple, yet yeah. effective investment solution at a relatively lower cost as compared to hmm. funds, right? But at the same time, we believe that uh, the entire investment community, including distributors, should make an effort to combine both active and passive in any investor's portfolio. Yeah. Because to achieve a longer term objective of investors, it is very important that you combine benefits of both active and passive. Yeah. So we believe that these two are complementary investment styles. So mm. there should not be competition between active and passive. Okay. So if entire distribution community make an effort to combine benefits of both active and passive in an investor's portfolio, mm. then in that case, uh, it will go a long way in achieving investors' long term investment objective. Uh, as a beginner, how much should one have passive investments in their portfolio? See, it depends upon uh, the aggressiveness and uh, investment objective of any investor. Mm -hmm. We believe that uh, asset allocation plays far bigger role in any investor's portfolio, okay. which is actually overlooked in mm. most of the cases. Uh, people are trying to find best stocks and best yeah. mutual fund schemes. Yeah. 
which is easier said than done because persistency of active performance is pretty low in the sense if you analyze mm-hmm. longer term data then funds which have done well in recent past may not do well going and going forward yeah. why right. uh, to make money in any investment product you have to anticipate which funds will do well going forward that's right yeah so we believe that uh, from core part of the portfolio should be created in combination of both active broad market cap based uh, index fund okay. as well as diversified active funds and then okay. satellite portfolio could be created based on these thematic and smart beta funds could you just uh, tell us what are some misconception about uh, passive funds uh, that people think so the biggest misconception according to me is uh, people say that passive funds don't generate alpha hmm. so we need to understand that aim or objective of passive fund is not to generate alpha right yeah. objective of passive funds is to replicate the benchmark and thereby generating returns which are very close to overall market returns with us right. Uh, with a much lower cost as compared to active funds so active funds are exposed to certain systemic mm. market risk right and uh, they could be very high variation in pass- active funds performance as compared to broad market cap based in this yeah while performance of passive funds would be very similar to act- underlying benchmark so objective of both active and passive is very different so one should combine both mm. to get desired outcome from longer term perspective At the same time, uh, we talked about uh, these smart beta factor based strategies, right? Mm. And which have performed exceedingly well from longer term perspective. So investors could combine mm. combination of broad market cap based in this index fund as well as these smart beta funds to yeah. generate slightly better returns as compared to plain vanilla market cap based. Right. So, what is your market outlook, or how do you see markets going forward? So, in last couple of years, we have seen that markets are uh, performing exceedingly well, right? Mm. So, broad market cap based index funds, such as Nifty, has delivered. close to 20 or percent return in last couple of years hmm. at the same time uh, uh, the broader market cap based index such as mid cap and small caps have generated far higher return as compared to large cap yeah yeah right but investors should be aware that uh, market has tendency to revert back to mean valuation hmm. some of the pockets such as mid and small caps which are trading at 60 to 70 percent premium as compared to their own long term averages in terms of uh, various valuation parameters such as yeah. pe and price to book value ratio have tendency to revert back to mean valuation so one should not get uh, mm. uh, too excited about recent performance of these pockets and right. one should keep rebalancing the portfolio based on long term investment long term investments so these are some of the things which investors should keep okay, in mind investors should always build the portfolio based on relative over study rather than what mm. has worked in the past because uh, these pockets keep reverting keep back. reverting okay thank you sir thank mm. you anil thank you so that brings us to the end of this episode If you want to know more on this topic you can reach out to me on my Twitter which is @postanil or on LinkedIn using my full name Anil Poste. We will be happy taking your suggestions. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next episode. To stay updated on this podcast, follow us at HD Smartcast on all the major social media platforms. To listen to more such podcasts, log on to www.hdsmartcast.com. At the UPS store, we want to make this summer the summer of shipping. Summer shipalooza, so you can start crossing items off your must ship list, like the vintage film camera your college kid needs for class, or the vase you told your mom you would send her ages ago. And with our pack and ship guarantee, your items arrive safe or we reimburse you. So stop by your local store today for everything you need to be unstoppable. Visit the upsstore.com/guarantee for full details. Available at participating locations. Most locations are independently owned. Product, services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary. See center for details. The UPS store. Be unstoppable.